What's up designers and welcome back to Remton Games. In today's episode of History of Game Design, we're going to be focusing on the sport of basketball. We'll be talking about how the game got started, how it grew, and how the game itself changed over time. Without further ado, let's get started. Basketball was invented in 1891 by James Naismith, a physical education professor at what is now Springfield College in Springfield, Massachusetts. The story goes that Naismith was trying to come up with an activity that the class could do on rainy days when they couldn't go outside. Naismith came up with the original concept for the game, in which he nailed a peach basket to the balcony of the gymnasium and the players would compete to throw the ball into the peach basket. This early form of basketball only had 13 rules and was a lot different from the game that we know today. For one thing, it didn't specify how many players should be on each team. The first basketball game had 9 players on each team because there were 18 people in Naismith's class and he just divided the class in two. However, by 1895, five player teams became the standard, which is still true today. Another difference was the basket. Originally, it was a literal fruit basket and every time somebody made a goal, they had to bring out a ladder to take the ball out. This quickly became tedious, so a hole was added to the bottom of the basket so that the ball could be knocked out with a broom handle. By around 1906, hollow metal rims were approved for use in the game. Basketball originally also did not allow dribbling. Players weren't allowed to move once they got in possession of the ball, and the only way to move the ball around the court was by passing to other players. However, players soon developed a technique of passing to themselves by throwing the ball away and then running to recover it. This technique evolved into what we now know as dribbling, in which players will continuously bounce the ball while in possession. The final main difference was the ball itself. The game originally used a soccer ball that was held together with large stitches that would interfere with bounce passes and dribbling. In 1894, Spalding became the first company to make official balls specifically for basketball, and over time techniques were developed to hide the stitches. The first official game of basketball was played on January 20th, 1892, and the game quickly spread around the country. At the time, Springfield University was known as the International Young Men's Christian Association Training School and was part of the YMCA. Because of this, the game quickly spread to YMCAs around the country as a game that could be played with very little equipment and few players. This also made the game appealing to high schools, which were generally much smaller around this time. Basketball also spread among American colleges. Just a year after the first game was played at Springfield College, the first college basketball team was established at Pittsburgh Geneva College, and Naismith himself coached a team at the University of Kansas, with the University of Chicago and the University of Kentucky also being early adopters. In 1895, the first intercollegiate basketball game was played between Hamlin University and the University of Minnesota, with the University of Minnesota winning 9-3. The first professional basketball league was the National Basketball League, which formed in 1898 with six teams. This was the first of many short-lived professional leagues that mostly appeared in the first half of the 1900s. However, most professional teams around this time didn't make money by playing in professional leagues, but instead by touring around the country playing exhibition matches, also known as barnstorming. These teams would play wherever there was space, including dance halls and even literal barns, and would make money by charging admission. Examples of these early barnstorming teams include the original Celtics, founded in 1918, and the Harlem Globetrotters, who started touring in 1926 and are still around today. Fun fact, the Harlem Globetrotters actually aren't from Harlem. They were originally formed in Chicago and didn't even play in Harlem until 40 years after they were formed. Harlem was included in the name because they were originally an all-black team, and at the time, Harlem was considered to be the center of black American culture. During the early 1900s, basketball also spread internationally, partially aided by World War I, as American soldiers would spread basketball with them as they moved through Europe. In 1932, the International Basketball Federation, or FIBA, was founded with eight member nations, Argentina, Czechoslovakia, Greece, 
Italy, Latvia, Portugal, Romania, and Switzerland. The first FIBA World Cup was held in Argentina in 1950. Men's basketball was also added to the Olympics in 1936, first being played at the Summer Olympics held in Berlin, Germany. Following the original National Basketball League in 1898, there were many attempts to form professional leagues in the United States. These include another National Basketball League in 1937, the Basketball Association of America in 1946, who merged together to form the National Basketball Association, or NBA, in 1949. These competing leagues meant that there was no official authority on the rules of basketball, and the rules varied from league to league. Even today, the rules of basketball vary slightly depending on where you're playing. Whether it be men's basketball versus women's basketball, college versus professional, or American versus international. The rules of basketball have also changed drastically over the years, and sometimes it can take years or decades for a rule established in one league to spread to the others. Throughout the history of the game, rules changes were made for two main reasons. To speed up the pace of the game to make it more exciting for spectators, and to reduce the dominance of extremely tall players. For an example of the former, look no further than the timeline rule added in 1933, which requires that the team who gains possession cross to their half of the court within the first 10 or 8 seconds of gaining possession. For an example of the latter, look no further than the 3 second rule, which says that offensive players cannot spend more than 3 seconds in an area near the goal known as the foul lane or the key. This rule was added in 1936 after a particularly rough game between New York University and the University of Kentucky, and the stated reason was to reduce rough play beneath the basket. This rule also made it more difficult for tall players to hang out near the basket and make easy shots, although this wasn't a huge concern at the time. It may be hard to believe, but early on basketball was not dominated by tall players because it was believed they didn't have the agility necessary to be successful. One player who shattered these expectations was George Mikan, who played between 1946 and 1956 primarily for the Minneapolis Lakers. He was an incredibly successful player who won seven championships in the competing leagues of the NBL, the BAA, and the NBA. He was also responsible for several rules changes to the game. First, he was responsible for the widening of the foul lane from 6 feet to 12 feet. This became known as the Mikan rule, and the rule was specifically changed to make Mikan a bit less dominant by forcing him to stand further away from the basket. Mikan was also responsible for the creation of rules outlawing defensive goaltending. Goaltending is basically when a player knocks away a ball that's on its way into the hoop, and it was totally legal until 1944 when a rule was passed specifically because George Mikan was so good at guarding the hoop. Mikan was also at least partially responsible for the introduction of the shot clock, which requires that the team in possession of the ball attempt a shot within a certain time period, usually 30 or 24 seconds. Before the shot clock was introduced, it wasn't unusual for teams in the lead to simply try to stall the game and prevent the opposing team from getting a chance to score. This tendency came to a head during a game between the Fort Wayne Pistons and the Minneapolis Lakers in 1950. This game was the lowest scoring game in NBA history with a final score of only 19 to 18, because as soon as the Pistons got in possession of the ball, they simply passed it around and didn't even attempt to score. This is because they didn't want to give George Mikan the opportunity to get the ball and make a comeback. Soon afterwards, the shot clock was introduced to speed up the game and prevent situations like this from occurring. Finally, Mikan popularized, if not outright invented, the hook shot, known for being incredibly difficult to block, which became a preferred shot for players like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, and Yao Ming. Another dominant player who caused rules changes was Wilt Chamberlain, who played between 1958 and 1973. Like Mikan, he was responsible for widening the lane, this time from 12 feet to 16 feet, and for the creation of rules against goaltending. 
this time for offensive rather than defensive goaltending. He was also responsible for rules changes around free throws because of his reported ability to slam dunk from behind the free throw line. One of the biggest rules changes in the history of basketball was the addition of the three point line, an arc on the court behind which field goals are worth three points rather than two. There were experiments with a three point line in individual games in 1945 and 1958, but it didn't become an official rule until the 1961 season of the American Basketball League. Even after the NBA was formed in 1949, there were still several competing leagues, and the three-point shot was considered to be a way that the ABL could draw in fans and differentiate itself from the NBA. The three-point shot was not successful in saving the ABL, which shut down in 1963, and several other leagues adopted the rule before the NBA finally added a three-point line in 1979. More recently, Steph Curry has been changing the way that teams think about three-point shots. Curry has been playing for the Golden State Warriors since 2009, and is widely considered to be one of the best shooters in NBA history. He is known for his incredible accuracy when shooting from longer distances, and is largely responsible for an increased focus in three-point shots in the league. While men's basketball is the more popular sport worldwide and is responsible for most of the major changes in the sport, women's basketball also has a long history that goes back nearly as far. The first women's basketball team was formed in 1892, the same year that Naismith played the first game at Springfield College. By 1976, women's basketball was added to the Olympics, and the NCAA began supporting women's college basketball in 1982. America's major professional women's basketball league, the WNBA, began in 1996. That's all I have for today. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss more videos like this in the future. If you want to see more, check out my other videos, like my previous entries in the History of Game Design series. I also have over 100 articles on the Remton Games blog, which you can check out at the link in the description down below. And join me next week where I'll be sharing the project that got me a master's degree in computer science. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.